I want to take this time to speak about uh, the seven pillars, the seven pillars of wisdom, which are written in uh, Proverbs 1 verse 9. Uh, let's, let's just go there. Proverbs 1 9, uh, 9 1, sorry. It says, wisdom has builded her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. Now, wisdom is being referred here as a ha, okay? Ha. And uh, we are told that uh, that wisdom has seven pillars. Now, I, I know this, this can be complicated, but uh, I want us to go slowly so that we can be able to understand this. Now, when we see this, this is obviously a symbolic description. Since uh, wisdom uh, is personified in this case. And uh, we must ask ourselves, what are these seven pillars that wisdom has erected? These seven pillars. Now, guys, you have to understand that many explanations exist regarding the seven pillars of wisdom in uh, this Bible passage. And uh, one idea is that since the number of seven often expresses completeness in Scripture, the passage communicates that the application of wisdom results in a complete, orderly, well-furnished house. A complete, well-furnished house, which uh, basically lacks nothing, which lacks nothing. It has everything. If it's the, the windows are well set, the light is on, maybe there's a car, the parking, and all these kind of things. It's like a full, complete picture of a house. So wisdom... The wisdom which you're talking about here is the wisdom of God. It's like, uh, it's like a complete house. You see, if a house uh, is missing some few things, is missing maybe some windows, is missing some roof, is missing this, it means that that house is not complete. But we see God is a God of completion. He completes what he started. He completes everything. And the God is a God of plan. So he puts his filler, the, the pillars of that house or that complete uh, completeness the pillars are set on wisdom okay so we have to ask ourselves concerning this and we have to check very well so let me let me be a bit more brief and clear here some commentators see the seven pillars as describing uh what you can call a traditional banquet pavilion okay which is understood this way wisdom's wisdom's call like, for example, in uh, Proverbs 9, 5, is perfectly fitting, okay? The Bible says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I've mingled. It's like, <laughs> it, it's like, it's a, a table which is already set and is only for you to go and eat. The wisdom of God has already been set. There is nothing that you need to set, add or remove. It's like a banquet which is already set. It's for you just to Take a seat and sit down and eat that kind of wisdom. Are you getting this point? Okay. Now, some ancient writings, they describe um, uh, the world as resting on seven pillars. The world is resting on seven pillars. And uh, if this was the author's meaning, then it is possible that her house, like you've just checked, the house in Proverbs 9 1 is a parallel, is parallel in some way with the world. However, this is unlikely understanding of this particular proverb. But let's check. When the Bible tells us about the pillars of wisdom, what does it talk about? Think about prudence, think about sound judgment, think about knowledge and discretion, insight, fear of the Lord, power, counsel. You see, God has his way of doing things. God has his way of doing things. And he explains to us so much that this world that we're living in is held by his power. His wisdom is the one which is holding this, this world. And unless we seek to learn that kind of wisdom, we'll be always will be confused. We'll be wondering, what's the essence? Why are we in this world? What's happening? I don't get this. I don't get that. But the pillars which are holding this world, is the wisdom of God. Is the wisdom of God. And he tells us we need to have that. And many people have theorized 
uh, uh, theorized that uh, the seven pillars of wisdom may refer to seven sections of Proverbs in the content previous to chapter 9. But uh, considering this interpretive option, it is most likely that her house, that house, okay, her house, where, where is that picture of the house? Yes, here, her house, that the wisdom, okay, her house and the seven pillars both refer to a home that is in proper order with the use of seven, emphasizing that it is completeness. You see, the seven pillars bring in a picture of completeness. God wants us to be complete in him through his wisdom, understanding what he has set forth for us. That's why he gave us the Bible, so that we can learn his wisdom. When we learn the wisdom of God, we become wise and we become complete in him. That's why the seven pillars are very important to understand the full complete wisdom of God. Then when we know God and walk according to his will, we're going to have that kind of knowledge which is going to give us completion. Because number seven, we can see it, it, it represents completion. It represents a lot. That's why God is always using seven. To give you example, the seven churches of Revelation, the seven, uh, 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 the seven seals, the seven this and that, the seven what. You see, all those seven, 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 seven is a way to tell us that God wants us to learn his wisdom. He wants us to learn his wisdom. And uh, the following verses which I'm going to tell you, they continue to describe the aspect of wisdom, which is personified as a woman. Okay? She prepares a meal and invites people to attend and gain wisdom. Okay? The woman has already prepared a meal for everyone. Wisdom has already prepared that people can gain wisdom. I mean, the knowledge of God has prepared us to gain wisdom. But are you willing to dine? Are you willing to get that wisdom which God has brought in so that you can understand him and you can be complete in him? Okay? Let me show you here what the Bible says. Uh, uh, Proverbs 9 verse 6. There's some verses here I want you to see. The Bible says, Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. Forsake the foolish and live. Who is the foolish one? The wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. So if you're following the wisdom of this world, you're becoming a fool. Because the wisdom of this world tells you that you will live and when you die, that's the end of you. The wisdom of this world tells you put uh, money before God. The wisdom of this world tells you that you need uh, uh, your career, your retirement, your this, uh, your this, your this. So many things that it keeps on calling you to have and have no time with, with God the Father. The wisdom of this world is always teaching you that there is no God. The wisdom of this is, world is always teaching you to be against God. But God is telling you, forsake that kind of wisdom of the world which is foolishness unto god and live when you have the wisdom of god you will live and you will go in the way of understanding and that's why many people they know that jesus was here many people know that jesus was here but they lack understanding why he was here he came here for you and for me the bible tells us in john 3 uh, 17 that Christ did not come to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. That is the understanding of why Jesus came. Many people don't understand this. They only know the other part that Jesus came and then now we're not supposed to do this, we're not supposed to do that. And they think, oh, Jesus came to bring rules. No, Jesus came so that we might life, have life and have it abundantly. That's the true wisdom of God. Because wisdom has much to offer. And she invites everyone to come to share in her satisfying feasts. Wisdom is spoken as a woman here in this case. And that wisdom is all about inviting. It, that wisdom invites you to come and share in this satisfying feast. In contrast, when you look at uh, uh, verse 13 to 18, 
See here. See this contrast. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. This is the wisdom of the world. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Are you seeing this? Who's so simple, let him turn in hither. As, and as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. You see the wisdom of the world tells you, let's steal this. Let's enjoy sin. But he knoweth not that the dead are there and that our guests are in the depth of hell. You see, the wisdom of the world makes everything sweet for you only for a time. But you forget that the end is hell. Friends, we need to have the wisdom of God. We need to understand the wisdom of God. Because uh, the whole of Proverbs chapter 9 is presented in a chiastic structure, meaning the first and the last portions are parallel ideas with the main point in the center passage. That is verse 7 to 12. And these verses emphasize a central truth, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. Okay, this is what is being emphasized here, the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of of wisdom when you have this fear of the lord you will gain true wisdom and knowledge of the holy one is understanding remember that in proverbs 9 10 so the entire chapter is devoted to the emphasis of seeking wisdom avoiding folly do you know what is folly folly avoiding lack of good sense foolishness foolishness according to god Having no godly wisdom is foolishness. No matter how many degrees you may have with this world, but God sees it as folly, as foolishness. So this whole chapter is very good to just go around and uh, study about this chapter, this, this chapter of Proverbs 9. It gives you that kind of knowledge, understanding. God inviting us to his wisdom, his banquet, his table is set so that you can eat from that wisdom of God. And finding this wisdom, you only find it in the Lord. Jesus himself is wisdom. The Bible told us that Jesus himself is wisdom given to us. So when you know Jesus, you have wisdom. That's why the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. The truth. Jesus is the truth. So Jesus is that wisdom that we should know. We should know Jesus. Understand him very well and we shall have all, everything that you have ever wanted. Because Jesus is that truth. Are you following? Do you know that truth? Do you have God's wisdom? You may be learning, but you cannot understand unless you have that wisdom of God. You can go to a theological college and, and study the Bible. But unless you know Jesus, you don't have wisdom. You can study the Bible just as, an, as a normal scholar, just the same way you can go to uh, 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 Iran or Iraq or wherever, and I decide to study Islam. Studying Islam gives me knowledge to understand Muhammad, to understand all those things, but it doesn't give me wisdom because I lack understanding. And that understanding comes only when you give your, your all to whatever you're doing. You see, we can have knowledge. I, I don't know which example I'm going to give you. And I've given many, many examples concerning wisdom and knowledge. Many people, many, many, many people, they knew Jesus came. But not many people understood why he came. Many people think that Jesus came, he died at the cross, but then they have to do this and this and this to gain salvation. Many people say, I have to be baptized to gain salvation. I have to do good works. I have to give to the poor. I have to stop sinning. I have to do this and this. Because they lack understanding. They lack the understanding that Jesus came and he became sin so that you can become righteous. Jesus took your sin so that you can take his 
righteousness. He became, he died so that you can have his life. And everything that we have, it's all about Jesus himself. So once you understand that Jesus did not die for nothing, he died for your sins. He replaced yourself. He became the substitutionary atonement for you. You understand that fact? Now that's the time you've gotten the wisdom of God. You understand that Jesus is the way. He's that truth. He's that wisdom. You see, wisdom is really important, guys. And when you're seeking wisdom, seek the true wisdom. Understand that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. Do you understand that? Because when you understand that, that's the time you will be saved. My friends, let's get wisdom. Jesus loves you. Understand that and mark it and put it in your mind and you will be saved. If you enjoy these videos, please give them uh, a like and also you can share to your friends and subscribe and uh, check also on the description below. We have a couple of other channels outside YouTube. You can go and check and see what we, we have and share to your friends. Let's be edified together. God bless you and have a good time.